Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, it has been a while since we reacted to Islam and the Occult. Today with the episode 2, Divination. Before we start the video, as always, guys, leave me a thumbs up if you enjoy the content, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support us. With no further ado, let's have a look. How happy are the astrologers who are believed if they tell one truth to a hundred lies, while other people lose all credit if they tell one lie to a hundred truths. That is absolutely accurate, man. Divination is the practice of seeking knowledge of the future, usually by the interpretation of omens or by the aid of supernatural powers. Millions of people around the world believe in divination and live their lives according to the utterances of soothsayers the shuffle of tarot cards and the stains of tea leaves. One of the oldest tea leaves or coffee. As I said numerous times, I come from the Balkan and on the Balkan, even though the Slavs identify as Christians, they all dabble in the occult. And most popular methods of divination in use today is astrology. 100%. Astrology Everywhere. is the study of the movement of celestial objects in order to try and gain insight into human affairs and world events. There are many different types of astrology, but by far the most sophisticated system can be found in Hinduism and is known as Jyotish. Yes. The word Jyotish is derived from Sanskrit and means the science of heavenly bodies. It is an ancient tradition that continues to influence the lives of- To be totally honest, I do believe that back in the day it was about celestial bodies, but if you look at those astrologers nowadays on mainstream television, I don't think that anybody is tracking celestial objects. Millions of people today. The Indian astronomer Balakandra Rao remarked, The belief in astrology among our masses is so deep that for every trivial decision in their personal lives, they readily rush to the astrologers with their horoscopes. Can astrology really be used to accurately predict the future? From a scientific perspective, some celestial bodies do indeed exert unseen forces on our planet. One example being the influence of the moon's gravity on Earth's tides. It is one thing to undeniable. explain the effect of celestial bodies by means of physics and other sciences of astronomy, but it's an entirely different matter to claim that they can be used to accurately predict human affairs and world events. Indian authorities have gone so far as to treat Jyotish as a scientific discipline. The University Grants Commission stated, There is an urgent need to rejuvenate the science of Vedic astrology in India to allow this scientific knowledge to reach the society at large and provide opportunities to get this important science even exported to the world. Now in all- Yes, no wonder if you go back to those old religions, Hinduism is many thousand years old, or even if you go back to the ancient Egyptians, there you will see that astrology played a major part of course. Some people argue that the pyramids themselves mirror the stars and are therefore used for astrological courses. In order to be considered a valid scientific discipline, Jyotish must fulfill the basic requirement of a scientific theory. It must stand up to rigorous testing. Yeah, I don't think it will. Jayant won't. Narlikar, India's most eminent astrophysicist, conducted an experiment to test the claim that intelligence can be determined from a person's horoscope. The experiment involved collecting the birth details of 100 highly intelligent school children, group A, and 100 intellectually disabled children, group B. These okay. birth details were then used to cast horoscopes for the children. The horoscopes were then mixed and randomized and sent to 27 experienced astrologers who were asked to try and match the horoscopes to the correct group of children. The average astrologer actually had a success rate of 43%. In order That's to okay. appreciate Not just how poor this is, imagine that a random group of non-astrologers were asked to guess blindly they would have an average success rate of 50%, since there are only Maybe. two outcomes. The child is intelligent or the child is intellectually disabled. No. This is still a better outcome than the astrologers who average 43%, a result which is worse than pure guesswork. Not only does this demonstrate that astrology fails to stand up to scrutiny as a scientific discipline, it also shows that astrologers do not have any special insights. If astrology cannot even make accurate predictions for matters in the present, 
then it stands to reason that it most certainly cannot accurately predict the future. I have to say that there's definitely something to it. So back in the day when I wasn't religious, I had an astrologer that was following my channel, read my charts. So I had to give him my birth date, my full name, my birthplace and certain other details. And the conclusions that he came to were quite surprising. I have to say, I'm really not into astrology, but he offered his service for free to me. And he mapped out the whole world and which place would lead to what kind of outcome for me personally. So there were certain countries that were good for health. Other countries they were good for family then again other countries that would be good for finances and i have to say even though i'm not following astrology whatsoever all of this is covered of course but looking back i have to admit that the guy was right i traveled the whole world and he was right about those countries in certain countries that he named i was of great health in other countries that he named yet again my wealth would increase so he was definitely accurate on those predictions even from a sociological perspective which is kind of creepy if you think about astrology collapse. Practitioners of Geotish come up with detailed horoscopes by taking into account the location, date and time of a person's birth. The astrological implication is that every person who is born at the same time and place will all have identical horoscopes and therefore should share similar personalities Pretty and much, dates. Huh? Yet clinical studies have shown that this is But it has to be down to the minute of birth. Not the case, even when dealing with identical twins despite the fact that they have identical genes, shared the same womb, and experienced similar childhoods. Professor Tim Spector, head of twin research at King's College, London, has been carrying out a pioneering 20-year study involving thousands of identical twins. He concluded, We see it in so many different ways. For example, our research has shown that twins rarely die of the same disease. Most of the twins recruited to our study went to the same school and lived together, eating the same food for the first 18 or so years of their lives. But the outcomes of their lives are often very different indeed. We can see that even from a sociological perspective, Geotish falls apart in terms of its predictability. Now astrologers typically respond by explaining that a difference of just a few minutes between the birth times exactly. of individuals yeah. can result in vastly different horoscopes and hence accounts for the variations observed in the lives of identical twins. The problem with this response is that it does not account for the phenomenon of conjoined twins, whereby two individuals are born sharing a single body, and therefore have an identical birth time and horoscope, and yet end up having vastly different personalities and fates. There are cases where conjoined twins are surgically separated, with only one twin surviving and going on to lead a normal life. From an astrological perspective, Normal. this makes zero sense given their identical horoscopes. Hindu astrologers who believe in reincarnation will appeal to the concept of karma in order to explain away this issue. They will argue that each soul's accumulated karmas from numerous past lives also influence an individual's personality and fate, and therefore can account for all such differences, even among conjoined twins. The problem with this explanation is that our past lives and karmas are variables that are unknown to astrologers, and hence any predictions they make through Geotish are completely undermined by factors that are unquantifiable. Right. What all this demonstrates... So every time they don't have an answer, they can simply blame it on karma. ...it is that using okay. the planets and stars to predict the future has little basis in reality. Now people might think, astrology is just a bit of fun, where is the harm? From an Islamic perspective, believing that the planets and stars influence or determine our fate is idolatrous. Yep. Even just dabbling in astrology by reading your horoscope in a newspaper is a very serious matter. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Whoever seeks knowledge from the stars is seeking one of the branches of magic. Now putting aside the failures of astrology, this does not mean that all methods of divination are baseless. Although the practice is strictly forbidden in Islam, there is one method of divination which does grant limited access to the unseen, yeah. that of soothsayers. 
the 19th century occultist Helena Blavatsky Blavatsky is the perfect case study to illustrate this. By the way, for people that don't know, and this will probably get this video shadow banned yet again, but nevertheless, I have to speak my mind here. This person created the Lucifer Trust, and then later on, they renamed it into the Lucius Trust. Now, you do the Google search for yourself and look up that the Lucius Trust is part of the United Nations to this very day. Take a look hmm. at one of her prophecies. Why? England Strange. is on the eve of such or another catastrophe. France, nearing such a point of her cycle, and Europe in general threatened with, or rather on the eve of, a cataclysm. This prophecy about a coming disaster in Europe was first published in the year 1888, which is 26 years prior to the outbreak of the two world wars. Right. Blavatsky elaborated on the specific events that would take place in a prophecy published in her monthly journal called Lucifer. A camp filled with war chariots, neighing horses, and legions of Lucifer the Light Bringer, hence the Lucifer Trust, and then later on the Lucius Trust. Yet again, I cannot speak about this on YouTube, but please look it up. Long haired soldiers. Further on, calm and serene in its perfidious beauty, the open sea stretches far and wide. Truly the monumentless cemetery of the million sunk in its depths. The sight of his snorting steed pleases him no longer. The recollections of guns and banners wrested from the enemy, of cities razed, of trenches, cannons and tents, of an array of conquered spoils now stirs but little his national pride. Visions of another kind now haunt his weary days and long sleepless nights. What he now sees is a throng of bayonets clashing against each other in a mist of smoke and blood, thousands of mangled corpses covering the ground torn and cut to shreds by the murderous weapons devised by science and civilization. Two score millions of men dead now to all spiritual aspiration and soul life. A people, henceforth deaf to the peaceful voice of the honest citizen's duty, averse to a life of peace, blind to the arts and literature, indifferent to all but lucre and ambition. What is thy future kingdom now? A legion of war puppets as units, a great wild beast in their collectivity. A beast that, like the sea yonder, slumbers gloomily now, but to fall with more fury on the first enemy that is indicated to it. Indicated by whom? It is as though a heartless, proud fiend, assuming sudden authority, incarnate ambition and power, had clutched with iron hand the minds of a whole country. By what wicked enchantment has he brought the people back to those primeval days of the nation when their ancestors, the yellow-haired Suevi and the treacherous Franks, roamed about in their warlike spirit, thirsting to kill, to decimate and subject each other? By what infernal powers has this been accomplished? Yet the transformation has been produced, and it is as undeniable as the fact that alone the fiend rejoices and boasts of the transformation effected. The whole world is hushed in breathless expectation. Not a wife or mother, but is haunted in her dreams by the black and ominous storm cloud that overhangs the whole of Europe. The cloud is approaching, it comes nearer and nearer, oh woe and horror. He is suddenly transported into what looks like a fairy-like hall, lit with most glowing lights, and built of materials the like of which he had never seen before. He perceives the heirs and descendants of all the monarchs of the globe gathered in that hall in one happy family. The crowns, by authority and the grace of God, have been thrown off, and they now rule by the grace of divine humanity, chosen unanimously by recognition of their fitness to rule, and the reverential love of their voluntary subjects. You can see by the use of the language here that Blavatsky herself thought that she was on the side of good. She thought that Lucifer was the light bearer. She thought that Lucifer is a beautiful angel. She didn't understand that her art was darkness. She didn't understand that she was essentially a Satanist. She really thought of herself as the good person. She even went so far to say that the Christians are the Satanists and that Lucifer is the true God. Analyze this prophecy in detail. It sets the scene by painting a very bleak picture. The mention of a monumentless cemetery of millions and raised cities points to a devastating conflict that has desolated mankind. Sure. This is an accurate description of the First World War, which raged from 1914 to 1919 and left in its wake the destruction of Europe and millions of dead and wounded. The prophecy goes on to speak of ominous visions of bayonets, smoke and blood that haunt the dreams, 
which points to another violent conflict looming on the horizon. This foretells the outbreak of the Second World War, which took place 20 years after the first. Both of these global conflicts resulted in more death and destruction than any other in history. The reason for this was the new weapons technology that had been developed at the time. Innovations such as chemical weapons and the atomic bomb Open meant them. that entire towns and cities could be decimated in an instant. The prophecy may be alluding to this with the mention of new murderous weapons devised by science. Notice how our people are said to be blind to peace. They are characterized as war puppets in slumber who are ready to fall back into conflict at the first opportunity. This situation perfectly describes the downtrodden state of the German people in the aftermath of the First World War. They got destroyed, when Germany man. lost the war, they were forced to sign a humiliating peace treaty, which caused great resentment among the German people. This resentment was a direct causal factor that led to the outbreak of the Second World War. Germany was, indeed, a sleeping giant thirsty for revenge. Yes. The prophecy goes on to describe... And again, this is another topic that we cannot talk about here on YouTube. I should really switch platforms, but people do not understand that the Germans voted that person into place because that person actually rebuilt Germany after the First World War. There was nobody as successful as that given person in rebuilding the country. An ambitious fiend who will have a sudden rise to power and hold a strong grip on the minds of an entire nation. This perfectly mirrors the advent of Adolf Hitler, who rapidly rose to power in Germany as the leader of the Nazi party. He went from an obscure politician to being the dominant force in German politics in just a few short years. He was an best eloquent public speaker, speaker and ever. skillful propagandist who bewitched the German best people. Ever. The prophecy goes on to mention Swevi and Franks, which were Germanic tribes. I'm actually very happy that I grew up in Germany and therefore I'm able to understand German and listen to his speeches. No matter what you think of his ideology, that is not the topic of debate. However, in terms of speaking skills, he was the best. And hence, Germany is identified as the Fiend's nationality. Yeah. The Fiend is also said to rejoice and boast of the transformation he has brought about in his nation. Again, this perfectly mirrors Hitler, who brought sure. about an astonishing revival in Germany. Unbelievable. By transforming it from bankruptcy into the economic and military superpower of Europe in just a few short years. Nobody the was able to do this. prophecy then describes the reaction of the world, which is said to be hushed in breathless expectation, as it watches the fiend who is said to hang over Europe like an ominous storm cloud. This perfectly describes the world's feeling of dread just prior to the outbreak of the Second World War. A weak and divided West had tried and failed to appease an ambitious Hitler, who carried on aggressively expanding Germany's territory. A wide-scale conflict then became a matter of when, not if. The world could only watch on in horror as it hurtled towards another inevitable war. Yeah, again, I have to censor myself here. The conflict was, of course, not based upon him expanding Germany. There was a minor conflict. The real conflict has to do with the banks within Germany. The prophecy you know next I mean. fast forwards to a time after the war when the world is said to be in a state of peace, as if one happy family. The monarch's crowns, a symbol of their authority, are said to have been thrown off and leaders are now given rulership by unanimous recognition of their voluntary subjects. This mirrors the post Second World War era, which saw Europe enter into an unprecedented period of peace. Thanks to treaties such as NATO and economic political alliances such as the European Union. Yeah, it and as I just mentioned, the European Union still holds the chair of the Lucius Trust to this very day. So you connect the dots, please. Here is the world's transition away from empires. It's really annoying that I cannot speak freely here, but we have to do what we have to do, guys. And monarchies to modern nation states ruled by democracy. Democracy. In summary, we can see Human that rights. this prophecy yes. accurately foretold the outbreak of both world wars, along with some key events surrounding them. The prophecy is so detailed that it goes beyond guesswork and coincidence. Sure. So what is Blavatsky's explanation for how she gained such an insight into the future? She claimed that there is a special dimension or plane of existence known as the astral light. It She's is right. a great picture gallery of eternity, a faithful record of every act and even thought of man, of all that was, is, or ever will be in the phenomenal universe. We can see that Blavatsky spoke of astrolite as a kind of cosmic hard drive. 
yeah. that has a permanent record of all thoughts and actions of- Yes, and she's absolutely correct because time is just an illusion. Think about it. God is the ultimate creator. God is transcendent of time. He exists outside of time and space. He creates time and space. Therefore, what appears for us as linear time and space in reality is just a creation of God. And God, as I said, exists outside of time and space, which means that the higher reality exists without time and space. And therefore, we conclude that time and space is simply an illusion. It is not eternal like the creator. It is finite. It is limited. It is a lower creation. It is a lower reality, if you will. But it means as well that if time and space is a lesser creation for us and we experience time and space, but God does not, that means ultimately that everything has happened already, that time and space, past and future, are all just illusions, all just delusions. And the only thing that truly exists is the now. And within that now, everything is accessible, almost like a hard drive, as he says, or like the internet. All the information is out there already. Our destiny is sealed, so to speak. Man. By accessing the astral light, one is able to access any information about the past, present or future. Yeah. Let's now put this claim to the test by analyzing more of her prophecies. Blavatsky had this to say about the reception of her works. No one styling himself a scholar in whatever department of exact science will be permitted to regard these teachings seriously. They will be derided and rejected a priori in this century, but only in this one. For in the 20th century of our era, scholars will begin to recognize that the secret doctrine has neither been invented nor exaggerated. Here Blavatsky claimed that scientists would initially reject her esoteric teachings. However, they would come to the society, 20th century. The With the 20th century having passed by, it's safe to say that this is a failed prophecy. Blavatsky in her writings touches upon numerous academic fields such as biology, sociology, religion, and history. Yeah, I wouldn't go so far at all to say that this is a failed prophecy because, as I mentioned in the beginning, her Lucius Trust is still part of the UN. And if you look into the UN and the power that it has over the world, I would say it actually came into fruition. No mainstream scholar in any of these academic disciplines have come to agree with, or even take seriously, the claims she put forward in her writings. Another example. Yeah, yet again, the mainstream that is presented to us, which is essentially yet again just a propaganda machine. But if you look behind the scenes, you will see that the people up there actually do believe in what she has to say. The of a failed prophecy is the following, yeah. in which Blavatsky spoke of an individual called Paracelsus. Now, if we recollect how they have deprecated Paracelsus and his theory of man and the stars being composed of like substances, how ridiculed he was by astronomers and physicists, for his ideas of chemical affinity and attraction between the two, and then realize that the spectroscope has vindicated one of his assertions at least. Is it so absurd to prophesy that in time all the rest of his theories will be substantiated? We can see that Blavatsky thought very highly of Paracelsus, who was a 16th century Swiss physician, alchemist and philosopher. Blavatsky claimed that all of Paracelsus's theories would eventually be proven true and accepted by scientists. Paracelsus was ahead of his time, and while he did have an influence in medical reform, he actually came up with many theories about diseases, which have been categorically disproven and rejected by the scientific community. For example, the idea that diseases are caused by the exhalation of distant stars and transported to Earth by means of celestial rays. In summary, we can see that Blavatsky's claims about astral light fails as an explanation for her perfection. Yet again, I don't want to take her aside here. I have no interest in that whatsoever, but I'm going to play devil's advocate because she said in time. So who tells us that his theory is not correct after all? Right now, people do not agree with his theory. The mainstream agrees with the germ theory. Other people, on the other hand, might agree with the terrain theory. And therefore, in time, we might come to see that his theory was right after all. Insights. Just playing devil's advocate. We don't know. Multiple inaccurate predictions contradict her claims of having access to a perfect record of the future. How can we explain the hit and miss nature of her prophecies? How is it that she could make detailed, accurate predictions that go beyond guesswork or coincidence on the one hand, while also making massive blunders on the other? The religion of Islam reveals the diabolical mechanism by which soothsayers operate. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, while the angels talk amidst the clouds about things that are going to happen on earth, the devils hear a word of what they say 
and pour it in the ears of a fortune teller, and they add 100 lies to that sure. one word. That makes sense. Here we are informed that the devils among the jinn have access to some knowledge of the unseen by eavesdropping on the angels in the heavens for news that they can pass on to soothsayers here on earth. We are told that these devils do not share this knowledge in uncorrupted form. They are said to mix each truth with numerous lies, which perfectly explains the hit and miss nature of the soothsayers' predictions. Another aspect to consider is the nature of the prophecies put forward by soothsayers. If they really do have access to realms that contain a perfect record of the future, then why is it that they do not get insanely rich by correctly predicting the lottery numbers? Sure. The reality is that many soothsayers struggle to make a living by charging people money for personalized readings. This situation... Yeah, I mean, it's needless to say that the majority of those people are charlatans. Islam's claims about the devils snatching the information from the angels. This is because in the Islamic narrative, angels are noble beings who fear God and never disobey him. So, if it's you think about it, disobey. angels would be unlikely to discuss trivial or frivolous matters such as the outcome of the lottery. However, we sure. would expect them to discuss matters of significance such as war, death, and other such momentous events that impact human beings here on Earth. This perfectly explains the limitations of soothsayers who cannot go beyond the topics of conversation of the angels. The Qur'an alludes to these personality traits of the angels when it recounts a conversation between them and God. And mention, O Muhammad, when your Lord said to the angels, Indeed, I will make upon the earth a Khalifa, a successor, or generations of man, one following another. They, the angels, said, Will you place upon it one who causes corruption therein and sheds blood, while we exalt you with praise and declare your perfection? He, God said, Indeed, I know that which you do not know. Here we are informed that the angels became concerned with the news of man's creation and authority on earth, and questioned God about the corruption and bloodshed that would follow. So we can see that far from being mindless robots, angels are in fact beings endowed with intelligence and curiosity, who would naturally discuss the actions of man on earth. In conclusion, this video has demonstrated that Islam has a deep insight into the world of divination, and better explains the observations and experiences of soothsayers than occultism is able to offer. This is because Allah, God Almighty, is the one who revealed the Qur'an and inspired Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The Qur'an declares, Indeed, Allah knows the unseen aspects of the heavens and the earth, and Allah is seeing of what you do. All right, guys, this is it for today's video. Long enough as it is, so I'm going to cut it off here. As I mentioned in the later part of the video, I was playing devil's advocate. Not because I agree with occultists, quite the opposite. I'm Muslim, alhamdulillah. However, back in the day, yes, I dabbled in the occult myself. And therefore, I have to say, unfortunately, is much, much deeper than you would believe it is. People really think that the mainstream scientists don't agree with occultists, and therefore those occultists, they've been discarded. Hey, they've been debunked. Unfortunately not. And I cannot talk about this here on YouTube, as I mentioned in the video as well. Just look it up yourself. Google Google Lucius Trust, Google Blavatsky, Google Alistair Crowley. See how those things are all connected with each other and you will see that the occult is still well and alive. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon or via Merch, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.